edition of Boys Toys, we're bringing you the ultimate head-to-head -head battle. From the Golden State to the Sunshine State, and then back again. We want to see which state has the better toys, California or Florida. From a personalized submarine that's taking underwater exploration to a whole new level, to a plane that lets you fly in its purest sense. I'll show you the best in performance, design, and everything in between. And by the end, I'll crown his king amongst the boys. Coming up on Boys Toys, a toy that is taking you places you've never been before when we return. My next cool craft will have you reevaluating your definition of adventure and wonder. Ready to go places that you've never been before? Well, then check out Triton Submarines, a game changer in the watercraft business. It's really crazy when you think about we're exploring all over the heavens, looking for water on other planets, and we've never even explored the water on our own planet. 5% of the ocean has been explored, 95% hasn't. So there's so many things that will be first times. Every time you dive, you're almost guaranteed to see something that no man has ever seen before, and that's pretty cool. This is for real. This is not science fiction. This is science fact. We have put together, based on a lot of engineering and technical know-how, a vehicle that a person with the right resources can own for his own use. And unlike traditional subs of the past, Triton is offering a whole new way to experience life under the sea. What used to be a little submarine with steel walls all the way around and little tiny windows to look out of, it's, no, it's not like that anymore. And Triton's philosophy from the get-go was that if you wanted to have a great immersive experience, that it needed to be something that took place from a transparent pressure hull. Put simply, a completely crystal clear way to view your subaquatic surroundings. That's why Triton Submarines uses these all acrylic spheres for the hull. The acrylic's properties are almost identical from a refractive standpoint to water, so when you put it in water, it disappears. When somebody gets in, the first thing they do is start to try to reach out to see where that hull is, and that makes for a pretty amazing experience. All right, are you ready to channel your inner James Cameron? Well, then check out the different sub-models that Triton offers. We manufacture five different models. First of all, we have two and three passenger configurations that can dive either to 1,000 or 3,300 feet. So we have the 1,002, which is this model. We have a 3302, which is essentially very similar, except the acrylic is quite a bit thicker, and that'll dive to 3,300 feet. And then we have three passenger models. Think those depth potentials are impressive? Wait till you hear about another sub that Triton is working on. And then we have our newest submersible, which is the 36,003 full ocean depth. That is a glass sphere that will carry three passengers to full ocean depth, 36,000 feet. Truly remarkable. And uh, I mean, who's going to that depth? And what can you see at that, at that level? Well, the amazing thing about going to 36,000 feet is only three men have ever been there. Those three guys include Don Walsh and Jack Picard in 1960, and then, most recently, film director James Cameron. All of the guys who have been to that depth, however, did so in a design that barely had a tiny viewport. This will no longer be the case with Triton's new deep sea design. As submersible builders, the pinnacle of achievement, as well as the most compelling project that we could do, is open up the full ocean to exploration. And as Triton, we just don't see doing that in a steel hull. It's got to be a transparent pressure sphere, and therefore we've moved to glass technology. Tell me about what the glass offers that some of the other materials in the past Acrylic is actually not strong enough to withstand the tremendous pressure that you have at depth. So at that point, you have to make a decision as to what other material you might use. But glass's properties, if you put it in a sphere as an arrangement, and you put compressive force on it, in other words, uniform compression, like water would put on it, it's remarkably strong. It's in fact stronger than titanium. So exactly how much pressure is being exerted on you at those depths? Well, take the 3,300-foot depth-capable sub, for instance. 
At that underwater distance, there's 1,460 pounds acting per square inch. When you add up how many square inches are on that sphere, that's a heck of a lot of pressure and the reason they've moved to glass technology for deep sea diving. All right, so I now know the basic design of the sub, but I still want to learn a bit more. I think it's time for me to enroll in submarine piloting school. We are officially underwater. Woo, scary. Not really. It's a, this is the simulator. So for a guy who comes in and wants to learn to pilot one of these things, this is a portion of the training that he has to go through, correct? Yep, yeah, absolutely. And after a short safety briefing by Mark, it was then time for me to take the wheel. All right, why don't you take the stick and just keep pressing now forward and we'll keep heading over towards the resort. Now, if you see us getting too high, you just put your thumb here and pull down a little bit and that'll bring us down. So we went ahead and landed on the seafloor, probably because you want to just sit around and have a glass of champagne, you know, and, and have, uh, you know, probably a good 20, 25 hours in the simulator, um, you know, maybe a little bit more than that by the time you get through you know, all the different briefings and that sort of thing. So I had two and a half minutes. That's probably not sufficient enough time. You only hit a couple of structures and there was no significant damage, so I think we're all right. Okay, so what else should you know about these superior subs? Well, they descend underwater at a rate of a few hundred feet per minute. It uses a water ballast tank as far as the moving up and down in the water column. It uses electric motors for propulsion and it uses a very simple system of scrubbing the CO2 out of the cabin, which makes your life support. It's, they're very simple systems. They all just combine together. And have a possibility to stay underwater for around eight hours at a time using a metabolic makeup system. As we breathe, we use oxygen. We create CO2. We use a chemical compound called sodasorb that absorbs the CO2 out of the atmosphere. And so as that's absorbing the atmosphere, we're putting new oxygen back in. So this is something that I would recommend to anybody that has the opportunity to try it. Even people that didn't think they had any interest in marine biology or the oceans in general will find this to be just an amazing experience. It's certainly an amazing experience to go on any of these super yachts. That experience is being on the deck of a vessel, which a lot of people have had in their lifetime. It's certainly a completely different ball game to be able to take somebody in a transparent hull on a deep dive. And Still not sure about exploring that deep underwater? Well, these guys tell me that subs are one of the safest modes of transport. And they have a perfect operational safety record, meaning there's never been a serious injury or fatality on one of those submersibles. So statistically speaking, this craft is actually safer than any commercial aircraft or car or form of transportation, so they're remarkably safe. Now, as far as price is concerned, that depends on how many people the craft seats and how deep it's capable of diving. If you want to go to the bottom of the ocean, well, that's going to cost you over $17 million. But for a personal explorer that can go between 1,000 and 3,300 feet deep, Expect to pay between two to three million dollars for your own personal submarine. Now for the moment of truth to crown the king of boys toys, the ultimate aircraft, sub, or car. I want to find out which toy is the greatest and more importantly, which state is the greatest. Now I know each toy on the show was pretty amazing and deserves a spot in your adult toy collection. I think a little head-to-head -head battle is just what we need. So, let's get to the grading. For this competition, we're scoring in three separate categories. One, look and design. Two, performance. Three, X Factor. Now for the breakdown. For each category, there's a possibility to earn five points. For a possible grand total of 15 points. CXC Simulator. This machine not only combines two of the things that men love most, cars and technology, but it's way more advanced than other car simulations out there. So I'm giving you a total of 10 out of 15 points. Triton Submarines. Talk about taking underwater exploration to a whole new level. 
I'm giving you a total of 15 out of 15 points. Quicksilver Ultralights. Although it looks like an advanced lawn chair with wings, this flying machine is the definition of what flying is about. The freedom to go anywhere. What a fun experience. Grand total, 12 out of 15 points. Mosquito Helicopters. Not only can you take off and land from your own house, but you can design your brilliant bird from the ground up. This is the epitome of what a boy's toy is about. Total of 13 points out of 15. Tesla, not just your average electric car. This is the pinnacle of a man-approved, eco-friendly vehicle. Look in design, five points. Performance, four. X Factor, five. For a total of 14 points out of 15. The Jet Board. This rocket on the water will not only have you busting tricks like never before, but it's an inexpensive way to get in on the next big sport. For a total of nine points out of 15. Drum roll, please. The ultimate boys' toy is Triton Submarines. These underwater explorers are not only groundbreaking in their field, but they're taking people to places they've never been before. And I know a cool car and an amazing airplane is one thing, but when you think about it, these things are like having your own personal spaceship. And as far as which state has the greatest toys, California or Florida? Well, I know it's a cop-out, but I have to say it's a draw. Way too many cool toys to say one coast is better than the other. Sorry. All right, that's it for this edition of Boys Toys. I'm your host, Jen Barlow. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you again next time. If you thought one state had better toys than the other, head to WealthTV.com, decide which toy and which coast you'd crown as ultimate boys toy.